Welcome all to a new class of ethology. Here we are dealing with a very important aspect of ethology, the learning part. So as we can see this term learning, which is a cliche term which we can hear throughout our, our life from our childhood till our present day. We can learn in different ways from different people, from different objectives of different people as well as other study areas, academic purposes. Even from a little child, we can learn a new thing. It can be of different multitudes. It can be of many integral equation like things, very deep knowledge things or a very basic thing as such as uh, learning a new manner or learning a new language. There are all different kind of aspects involved in our human day to day daily life. It is also applicable to animal kingdom. So learning is a very important part of animals and how they live, how they respond to the environment. So the learning is a crucial thing and learning is a very important part. So we can have to learn what is learning. So learning is a neural mechanism by which a person changes his or her behavior as a result of experiences. So it is always exclusively based on the experiences or it is, can be said as an acquisition of knowledge or skills as a result of experiences and consequently it can change the behavior of that person. So the learning is always linked to the experiences and learning has also been divided into two different kinds on the basis of their experiences. The learning is divided into two different kinds. The first one is the associative learning and second one is the non-associative learning. So the first one, the associative learning, it is a learning method in which the person or the subject or an animal links one stimulus to another to learn a new thing. That's a kind of relative learning or an associative learning. The second one, the non-associative learning, it's a kind of learning in which the organism either react or not react to that response. So they might ignore or they might react to that response. So the, in this class, we are dealing with the, only this part, the associative learning. As you as I said earlier, learning is a multitudinal thing, big subject. So I'm restricted to only two different kinds, the associative as well as the non-associative learning. The associative learning is divided into two different kinds, the classical conditioning as well as the operant conditioning. On the other side, the non-associative learning is divided into habituation as well as sensitization. So in this class, we are dealing with the associative learning, the classical conditioning, as well as the operant condition. So we have to learn what is an associative learning. In this type of learning, the subject learns a specific thing about a relationship that can associate one stimulus to another. In case of dogs, which is a common example which we can take as we have pets in our home. If the dog responds to a bell visit or a calling bell, the dog might run fast to the door and receive its owner. The bell ring is a conditioned stimulus and the unconditioned stimulus might be the response to that owner. Or maybe in other case, if it is a trained dog, the whistle is always at the conditioned stimulus and the unconditioned stimulus will always be some kind of treat, a sugary snack or a meat snack which the dog receives. So whatever the dog does in that phase is the response that kind of reflex to such kind of stimulus. The dog might jump, the dog might bark, the dog might sit, the dog might roll over. They are all kind of the reflex action they put or such kind of response, the conditioned response the dog puts in. So if we take in our case also, there is also many different kind of associative learning such kind of children do for the parents. That they are all coming under the associative learning parts and there is a major thing, the conditioned reflexes. That kind of reflex pattern occurs in throughout this animal kingdom. So the associative learning, as I have said earlier, is divided into two different kinds. The first one is classical conditioning. Going on to that, this is a very uh, primitive experiment done by Alexander Pavlo. It is done in the 18th century. It was a very uh, serendipitous uh, observation in which the Pavlo observed that the dog was salivating on seeing his housekeeper. So the Pavlo was baffled by such kind of response from the dog when the dog was salivating on seeing a person rather than the food. So Pavlo began de deconstructing what happened. So 
Pavlov did many kind of observational ethological things to observe that the dog was linking food to the housekeeper. So the housekeeper was turned into some kind of a conditioned stimulus and the unconditioned stimulus of eating that food began to make a conditioned response the salvation. So the dog was salivating on seeing that housekeeper considering the food is related to the housekeeper. So whenever the dog sees the housekeeper, he is registering in his mind that he is going to get fed or given a meat snack. So the dog began to salivate always on seeing the housekeeper. So the Pavlov deconstructed it and finally came to the major and the fundamental thing of ethological learning part, the classical conditioning. So he did is basically on three basic requirements. The first, the conditioned stimulus should always be applied before the unconditioned stimulus. And the pairing must occur several times. It might be in case of minutes, maybe hours or maybe even days. It should be repeated on and on. But the conditioned stimulus should always be applied before the unconditioned stimulus. And there should be not even a single separation between the conditioned stimulus as well as the unconditioned stimulus. So he considered this study gave it a good uh, research work and he came up with this graph. There are three different phases for the classical conditioning according to this graph. The first one is the acquisition period, the second one extinction period and the third one and the final one the spontaneous recovery period. As you can see here the conditioned stimulus which is a bell ring which Alexander Pavlov gave to the dog is the conditioned stimulus. The unconditioned stimulus is a meat loaf which is going the dog which the dog will be fed up with so the dog is constantly salivating on seeing this these two things so the dog is registering the bell ring as well as the meat loaf so the dog is always registering his mind that whenever the bell ring goes he is going to get fed so he'll be salivating like this well, that's the acquisition phase which i have said and coming to the extinction phase here the bell ring is only given the the meat loaf is not given so the dog will initially salivate for the first ring or maybe for the second ring, third ring it will also salivate but on the fourth as well as the fifth ring it, the reaction begins to reduce and finally there will be no response and the dog will be just static. It will not salivate or it will not move on but in case after a 24 hours period or maybe a day's period the dog when it is given a, a constant uh, bell ring the dog will just remember the memory and it will begin to salivate. In this case, that phase is known as the spontaneous recovery phase in which the dog recollects from the memory and find, find that it is going to get fed with the meat. So that's a spontaneous recovery phase. So these are the three different phases for the classical conditioning. Going on to the next one, the operant conditioning. This was a recent experiment done by the Frederick Skinner uh, a scientist and he he did with a rat a maze box as well as a, a few fruit loops as well as a, a device which gives shock a very simple and a humble experiment which gave a con very big part of learning the operant conditioning it is almost similar to the uh, the classical conditioning experiment in which the dog is associating a bell ring with a meatloaf but in this case the mouse is taught to perform an action rather than association. That's a major difference in operant conditioning as well as the classical conditioning. In this type of condition, the subject is taught to perform some voluntary action in response to a particular stimulus. In this case, the mace box or the Skinner box experiment, which I'm going to deal in the next slide, the mouse is given two different kinds of stimulus, an unpleasant stimulus as well as an unpleasant stimulus. So this kind of alerting signal act as a conditioned stimulus. We can see that it's a pleasant or maybe an unpleasant event. This is the maze experiment which I, uh, which I said earlier. In this, the rat enters one arm of the maze and goes through maybe by two arms. There are two different outcomes for that. It is A and B in which the rat enters the maze through one pathway and it is rewarded with a sugary snack a fruit loop at the end of this maze. The other mark, the pathway is that when the mouse goes through this maze, it will reach to a point that it gets shock treatment. So the mouse is having two different responses. Either it is getting fed or it is given a good shock treatment. 
So the mouse also responds in two different ways. The mouse can again come back to that area and have a good fruit loop a treat. And the other main part, when the mouse goes to this part of maze and it reaches the shock treatment, it just recollects and the mouse again takes that path back from that shock treatment area. So the mouse takes off that shock treatment from his memory and it just takes a new path and might reach the food loop region. So the mouse is taught to change its pathway by giving a stimulus. Here it is shock stimulus. The other phase that is reinforced with a good treat snack. So in this way, the mouse is having a learning pathway and it is getting conditioned on the basis of an operant. So this is the operant conditioning as well as the classical conditioning. So this is the major different aspect of associative learning which I have said in this class. The first one is the classical conditioning which is a Pavlov experiment and the second one is the operant conditioning which is always linked to the mouse as well as the maze box. Thank you all for hearing me. In the next class we will be dealing with the non-associative learning. Thank you all.